Hello students, I am Dr. Shalom Mudgal here. Let's start. Study hard, do good and the good life will follow you. Don't be same, be better. I think you have understood the value of this quote. By this meaningful and beautiful thought, let's go into the depth of study and learn. So we are going to study political science. Here we are going to study the different features of the Indian government and the US and differentiate their functions of legislature, executive, judiciary. We are here to study about these topics in details. Let's go for Indian government. I'm going to study the basic organs of it. So, the center government organization and working. As we all know, India is a federal state with subsidy unitary features. Federal state involves a division of powers between the center or federal government on the one hand and several state governments on the other. So, center government in which all powers are in the hands of a single central government which at will creates and delegates some of its powers to the state government. So, the function, how India function, India is the largest country which is divided into number of states. The constitution of India provides for government in two levels, they are state government and the union government. So, constitution separates the government into three branches. These three branches of the government are the legisla legislative branch which makes laws, executive branch which implements the laws and the judicial branch which interprets the laws and applies the laws and administers justice. Coming to the legislation or the making of laws. The main function of the parliament is legislation which means making of laws. Now here we will study in detail what is the function of legislature in Indian parliament. In India the parliament is the supreme legislative body as per article 79 of the constitution of India the council of parliament of the union consists of president and two houses which are known as the council of states that is Rajya Sabha and the house of people that is Lok Sabha. The president has the power to summon either house of the parliament or to dissolve the Lok Sabha. Each house has to meet within six months of the previous sitting. A joint sitting of two houses can be held in certain cases. But the cardinal functions of the legislature include overseeing of administration, passing of budget, ventilation of public grievances and discussing various subjects like 
development plans international relations and national policies the parliament is also vested with powers to impeach the president remove judges of the supreme court and the high courts the chief election commissioner and the comptroller and auditor general in accordance with the procedure laid down in the constitution of india all legislations require the consent of both the houses of parliament the parliament is also vested with the power to initiate amendments in the constitution of india so these are the functions of legislation coming to the executive power of the union the union executive carries out or ensures the laws made by the parliament it handles most of the day to day work of the country it consists of the president vice president the council of ministers headed by the prime minister now we are coming to executive in detail the president serves as ex the executive head of the state and the supreme commander in chief of the armed forces article 74 clause 1 of the constitution of india provides that there shall be a council of ministers with the prime minister as its head to aid and advise the president the president appoints the prime minister cabinet cabinet ministers governor of states and union territories judges of the supreme court and the high courts ambassadors and other diplomatic representatives the president is also authorized to issue ordinances with the force of the act of parliament when parliament is not in is not in session the president must consult the council of ministers and the prime minister before taking any executive decision it is important to note that the council of minister usually known as cabinet and constituted of the members of the ruling political party or alliance the prime minister are the members of parliament and therefore by convention in their hands rest the legislative and the executive powers of the center the federal units that is the states have their own setup in terms of legislatures uh, normally referred to as the state legislature and the state administrative wings similar to that of the center here here the governor is the head of the executive though the real power rests with the chief minister and his or her council of ministers there are certain territories in india that are not states but are known as union territories and these are governed 
directly by the center. The constitution of India prescribes the separation of legislative and administrative powers between the union and the states. Areas such as defense, railways, maritime, interstate trade, airways, banking etc. are under the jurisdiction of the center and the areas such as public order, police, agriculture etc. fall under the jurisdiction of the state. There is a third category of list also which in term as the concurrent list. It covers areas such as criminal law and procedure, economic and social planning, trust, bankruptcy, etc. over which both the center and the states have legislative and executive powers. Though in case of conflict between the two, the center's position prevails. Coming to our third slide that is the judiciary. Judiciary is the third branch of the government. Its functions are to interpret and explain the laws made by the legislature to punish those who violate law to protect the rights of the citizen now here we will discuss in detail about the function of judiciary the indian judiciary as of today is a cons continuation of the british legal system established by the English in the mid 19th century. Bo before the arrival of the Europeans in India, it was governed by laws based on the Arshastra dating from 400 BC and the Manu Smriti from 100 AD. These were the influential treaties in India, texts that were considered authoritative and legal guidance. However, till today the legacy of British system is manifested from the fact that India falls into the January of common law system. The procedure and the substantive laws of the country, the structure and organization of courts etc. emanate from the common law system. The Judiciary of India is an independent body and is separate from the executive and legislative organs of the Indian government. The Judiciary in India provides the people of the nation the necessary auxiliary precaution required to ensure that the government functions in favor of the people and their for the betterment of society. The judicial system of India is divided into four basic levels. At the apex level is the Supreme Court situated in New Delhi 
which under the scheme of constitution of india is the guardian and interpreter of the constitution of india which is followed by the high courts at the state level district courts at the district level and the lok adalat at the village and panchayat level the supreme court and the high courts have the special constitutional responsibility of enforcing the fundamental rights of the citizen as enshrined in part 3 of the constitution supreme court has the original appellate and advisory jurisdiction its exclusive original jurisdiction includes any dispute between the center and the states as well as matters concerning enforcement of fundamental rights of individuals the appellate jurisdiction of the supreme court can be invoked by a certificate granted by high court concerned in respect of any judgment decree or final order of a high court in both civil and criminal cases involving substantial questions of law as to the interpretation of the constitution supreme court decisions are binding on all courts or tribunals in the country and act as a precedence for lower courts under article 141 of the constitution all courts in india are bound to follow the decision of the supreme court as the rule of law so c in my slide the supreme court the supreme court i have already told you is the highest court of the judiciary in india these are some highlight points the high courts form a part the responsibility for the interpretation of the law lies with the supreme court whose judgments are binding the supreme court jurisdiction first one is the law decisions of the supreme court is the final and binding on all courts in india it is the most authoritative guide on the interpretation of laws it helps to secure uniform judicial practice throughout the country the only exception to this all embracing power is any law relating to the armed forces 